All right then, gang. So the next couple of components I want to tackle are the authentication components. That is sign in and sign up. Now, each one of these components is going to contain a small form for a user to sign up or sign in. Now, I'm going to do the smaller of the two, first of all, sign in. So let's open that up. Now, these two components, they are both going to have to be class based components. And the reason is that we want to store in a local state what a user types into the input fields. So to create a class based component using the package I showed you in the last tutorial, so we can just use snippets, I'm going to type RCE. So that's React Class Export tab. And now we get this component. Now we can delete this export up here because we're exporting it down here as well. We don't need to do both. All right then, so this component right here, it's going to have a state, right? We don't know what's in that state yet, so we'll just leave it as blank for now. Now also, we want to down here create a form. So let's first of all give this a class name equal to container. This is materialize to contain all the content in the central column. Inside that, we'll do a form tag. And this is going to have a class name of white to give it a white background that will come into effect later on. And then we also need to delete the action because we want to handle the submit ourselves. And we'll add that on submit event handler and set it equal to something. Again, we'll come back to this later. So inside this form, we need a few different fields. First of all, I'm going to do an H5 with a class name of gray hyphen text and then also text hyphen darken by three shades. And there I will say sign in. So this is just a title inside the form. Now we need a few input fields and each input field is going to be contained inside a div with a class of input hyphen field, just to give them some space. That is a materialized CSS class. Okay, so let's do a label first of all, and it's going to be for the email and the text will be email. Okay. Now under that we need an input field. And this is going to be of type email. Now it's going to have an ID equal to email, we'll be using the IDs later on. But it also means this can form the association because we've said for email, and it looks for the input with the ID of email, with the ID of email to associate the two. So we have the ID, we also want an on change event handler, which is going to fire every time a user types something or deletes something from this input field. So we'll handle that later on, we'll just set it up to begin with. Now, what I'm going to do is just copy this thing right here. And I'm going to paste it down below. The next field is going to be the password. So the logging in with an email and password, right? So let's change that. And also this and also this to password. And we'll change this to password as well. And now we have the input field for the password. We also have an on change event, which is going to fire something later on when a user types into this field. Now at the bottom, we just need a button. So I'll do another div with a class of input field. And inside that div, I'll just do a button with a class name of BTN. It's going to be pink and we'll lighten it by one shade and we'll say the Z hyphen depth is going to be zero just to take away that drop shadow. And inside we'll just say login. Okay. So before we do anything else, why don't we just create a route for this component. So when a user goes to forward slash sign in, it loads up this component and we can just preview it in the browser. So to do that, let's go to app.js and create the route down here. So we'll say route. And then the path is going to be equal to forward slash sign in. And then the component we want to load up is going to be the sign in component. Now, I've not imported that yet. So we'll need to do that now. At the top, we'll import sign in from and it's going to be dot forward slash components forward slash auth because we're in the auth folder forward slash sign in. Okay, so let's try this out. Let's go to forward slash sign in. And we get an error at the minute. And that's because we have this thing right here. It's not equaling some kind of function. So before we do anything else, let's go to the sign in component. And let's just create some functions that can fire when a user either submits 
or changes the input field. So these can be empty functions to begin with, but we'll just add them in. So when a user changes an input field, we'll create a function that will fire called handle change. So this function is going to be an arrow function. And inside, at the minute, all we'll do is just say console.log e. We don't really want to do anything at the minute. And we'll do the same thing for on submit. So we'll call this one handle submit for when the user submits the form. And we'll just log e to the console again. Now we need to hook these up inside these listeners. So when the form is submitted, we want to fire this to reference the component dot handle submit. And then, oops, that didn't go through. Handle submit. And then down here, we want to say this dot handle change. And then on this one, this dot handle change. So the same function is going to fire for these two things right here, handle change. Then when we submit, it's going to fire this other function. So let's save that now and view this in a browser. And we get root is not defined. That's because we've not added the E on the end. So let's do that. Save it. And hopefully, third time lucky. Okay. So now when we go to forward slash sign in, let's see if this works. Now we get this form. So that's working, right? And if we look in the console, then when we type something into these, it should fire that handle change function and log the event to the console, which we get every time we type something in or delete something. Same for the password. Okay. So that's all working now. All right, then. Now you'll notice that these things right here, they're going over the labels. And that's a bit of a bad user experience. Now to combat this, what we have to do is load in the JavaScript from Materialize. So I've come to the getting started guide again, and we're gonna grab this link right here. You see that? Now what we wanna do is paste that inside index.html at the bottom over here of the body tag. So let's paste it right there, save it. And now this should look better in the browser. If we click in one now, you see it goes up there and it doesn't cover what we type. So we need the JavaScript from Materialize for this little thing to work right here, okay? So anyway, now what we're doing is we're creating this form and we're hooking up those events. So instead of just logging this to the console, how about instead what we do is update the state of this component to keep track of what a user has typed in, right? So let's do that inside handle change. Instead of just logging this to the console, what we'd like to do is say this dot set state to update the state. And then inside we want to update a property which is going to be equal to either email or password. Now we don't have those properties defined yet. So let's do that to begin with. I'm going to say email is an empty string to start with. And also the password is an empty string to start with. Now then, how do we know which property we want to update when we type into one of these because they both fire the same function. Well, we're going to use the ID right here. So what we'll do is in square brackets, we'll say E dot target to get the target element dot ID. And that is going to get this the ID for whichever input field is being updated. So either password or email. If a user types into this, it's going to be email we update. If they type into this, it's going to be password we update. OK, so now we want e dot target dot value so that we can update the state with the value of whatever the target element is being changed with. All right. So now we've done that, what we'll do on submit is actually log the state to the console. Now, before we log it to the console, we need to say e dot prevent default to prevent the default action of the form being submitted and the page being refreshed when a user clicks on the button or presses enter to submit the form, because that is the default action of a form being submitted. We don't want that. So after we've done that, then we can console.log this.state, and that will log this thing right here. And don't forget that is keeping track of whatever a user is typing into the input fields. So let's give this a whirl. I'll go over to the browser and check this out. Email, I'll just say ryu at the net ninja code it UK and then down here password test one two three four so if I submit the form then we get that logged to the console the state awesome so now we kind of have this component created we're not hooking it up to any kind of authentication service at the minute but the basic functionality is here now now I'd like to do the sign up component which is similar 
and it's going to sign up a user. So what I'll do is just copy this dude and paste it over in sign up to begin with. Then we can change it. So as well as the email and password that a user needs to enter into the sign up form, I also want them to enter in a first name and a last name. And ultimately we'll be using those to create initials for the user to show them right here. So let us first of all go to the state and say first name so we can keep track of that. And then that's going to be an empty string to begin with. And also, oops, also the last name which will be an empty string as well to begin with. Okay then, so these can remain the same because it doesn't matter which input field we update, it's gonna recognize that from the ID. All we need to do is add in these input fields down below in the form. So now let's do that. I'm gonna come down here and I'm going to copy this thing right here and underneath the password right here, I'm gonna create another input field and this is gonna be for the last name. So let me just click there and alt click here to change these two, which will be last name. Then we'll change this to last name and this to text because the input type will be text. Okay, so we have the last name field. Now we need the first name, so let's copy that and paste it above. And this time this will be first name, so alt click both of these and we'll change this to first name name and we'll change this right here to first name as well so now this should all work as well it should work the same way but we need to hook up this route in app.js to visit it in the browser let's import it first of all import sign up from and it's going to be dot forward slash components forward slash sign up and i just remembered inside the sign up component we just created we need to change the name from sign in to sign up because we just copied and pasted and down below where we export it as well, we need to update that to sign up. Okay, so now inside here, we're importing that sign up component and we need to create a route for it. So we'll say route path is gonna be equal to forward slash sign up and the component we want to load is gonna be equal to the sign up component we just imported. All right then, so save that and give this a whirl in the browser. I can already see an error. <laughs> I don't want to visit it. So it says, cannot resolve components forward slash sign up. Of course you can't because we've not said forward slash auth because it's in the auth folder. Save that and view this in a browser. Now we see this component. So now if we go to sign up, then we see hopefully the sign up component. We need to change the title right there. So let's do that inside sign up. Let's go to the H5 and change this to sign up and save that. Cool. So that's updated over here. Now then let's try the form out. So we'll say yoshi at the net ninja.co.uk. Password test one, two, three, four. First name Yoshi. I haven't got a clue on his surname. Uh, Malagani, whatever, and log in. Okay, so now we get that logged to the console. So, whew, we've created these two components now, the sign in and the sign up component, and we've linked those up using route tags. And now when we click log in or sign up, what we're doing, and we need to change this text in a second, what we're doing is logging all of that information that a user enters into this field to the console. Later on, we'll be signing a user up using Firebase Auth or logging them in using Firebase Auth, but for now, this will do. So let's just change that login button down here and change it to sign up, like so, and now we're done, okay? So we've created those components. Next, I'd like to move on and create the form to create a new project. So we'll do that in the next video.